Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at um, time crystals. It's a pretty fascinating topic. We've got research papers and articles and we even found some, uh, some notes from a physics forum discussion. We're going to be trying to figure out what they are, why they're such a big deal, and what they could mean for the future. It's a fascinating topic for sure. You know, time crystals really challenge what we think we know about physics, you know, like the ground state of a system. Typically, the ground state is where things are static. It's the lowest energy state. But time crystals, they exhibit like these repeating patterns, even in their ground state. So it's kind of like a clock that never needs winding, always right. ticking, always in motion. So where did this idea come from? Well, our sources all point to Frank Wilczek, Nobel laureate. Back in 2012, he proposed the possibility of these time crystals. It's interesting because his concept wasn't based on like observing something new. It was more of a thought experiment, drawing an analogy to spatial crystals. So essentially he imagined a system that repeats in time, right? Exactly, just like a crystal lattice repeats in space. And this led to the prediction of systems that would break time translation symmetry. So their lowest energy state wouldn't be static. Interesting. So our sources highlight two main types of time crystals, discrete and continuous. Um, and it looks like discrete time crystals or DTCs have gotten most of the attention. What makes them special? Well, DTCs show this really curious behavior. It's called subharmonic response. Okay. They're periodically driven by an external force, kind of like a child pushing a swing. Okay, yeah. But instead of swinging at the same rate as the pushes, the swing might only move every other push. Oh, interesting. So it responds, but only at a fraction of the frequency, like it's picking and choosing which beats to dance to. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Our sources give a couple of examples of DTC systems where we can see this phenomenon. Yeah. One that really caught my eye was the array of coupled pendulums. Oh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So in this system, the pendulums are connected, and there's this driving force that's applied. But what's cool is that the pendulums don't just swing in unison with the force. Right. They synchronize in these complex patterns, oscillating at a fraction of that driving frequency. Oh, wow. So it's like a visual demonstration of time crystal behavior? It is, yeah. And it's not just pendulums. Our sources describe these experiments with spin systems where the atom spins, their angular momentum flip in a synchronized pattern that's a subharmonic of the driving frequency. Wild. And there are atom cavity systems where the density of atoms trapped in a cavity oscillates in a different pattern from the driving frequency. Uh. These observations across these systems, you know, pendulums, spin systems, atom cavity systems, right. they really demonstrate this underlying principle of discrete time crystals. They're not just theoretical, they've been experimentally realized. That's amazing. So this simple analogy to spatial crystals led to the discovery of these dynamic systems. Mm -hmm. What about continuous time crystals? Are they as well established as DTCs? Uh, that's a good question. So continuous time crystals, they display periodic behavior without that external driving force. They're more theoretically challenging. And for a while they were considered impossible because of some fundamental constraints. Right. But some recent experiments are starting to challenge that notion. Oh, wow. Right. Really? Yeah. So there's one experiment that caught my eye in our sources, and it involves a Bose-Einstein condensate, that state of matter where lots of atoms behave collectively. Right. And it's coupled to an optical cavity. And what's amazing is that this system, on its own, started oscillating between two states. Yeah, and that's really groundbreaking because it suggests that continuous time crystals aren't just theoretical. They might actually exist out in the real world, exhibiting spontaneous oscillations in their ground state. That's incredible. But I'm guessing creating and studying these time crystals, both discrete and continuous, probably presents some unique challenges, right? What are some of the things that scientists are struggling with? Well, one big one is the fragility of quantum systems. Right. I mean, these systems are incredibly sensitive. Any disturbance or noise can throw them off. Yeah. So maintaining those delicate conditions necessary for observing time crystal behavior, it requires really precise control and isolation. We need to keep them away from those environmental factors. So it's kind of like trying to build a house of cards in a hurricane. The slightest disturbance could just destroy everything. Exactly. This sensitivity must have implications for developing time crystal based technologies, right? Absolutely. One area where time crystals hold a lot of promise is quantum computing. Mm. 
but their sensitivity to noise is a huge obstacle. Yeah. If we want to harness these properties for real world applications, we need to protect them from disturbances and maintain their coherence over long periods. That makes sense. Protecting those delicate systems is key. What about creating the time crystals themselves? Are there limits to how big or complex they can be? Yeah, so scalability is another big challenge. Okay. The experimental systems we've discussed so far are small and simple. Scaling them up to create larger and more complex systems is a huge challenge. And it's not just about increasing the number of particles. Okay. It's about controlling the interactions between them, which gets really complex as the size increases. So it's like going from a simple model airplane to building an actual jet. The it, complexity explodes. It does. And I imagine the scalability issue has a direct impact on the potential applications of time crystals. Definitely. For instance, if we want to build a time crystal-based quantum computer, right. we need to create large interconnected systems that can do complex computations. Okay. Overcoming those scalability challenges is essential if we're going to unlock the full potential of this technology. Uh -huh. So we have these incredible systems that challenge how we think about time. Creating and manipulating them is like this delicate dance. Before we go too deep into the potential of time crystals, I think we should address a common misconception. Some people think time crystals are perpetual motion machines violating the laws of thermodynamics. Can you clarify that for our listeners? Sure. It's important to emphasize that time crystals are not perpetual motion machines. Right. They may exhibit those perpetual oscillations, but they don't create energy from nothing. Discrete time crystals require a driving force to keep those oscillations going. And continuous time crystals need an additional energy input just to be formed. So they're more like extremely efficient clocks. They yeah. still need some winding to keep ticking. Exactly. This is really important because it shows that time crystals follow the established laws of physics, even though they exhibit this unusual behavior. But since we're talking about the laws of physics, what about the second law of thermodynamics? The one that says systems tend toward disorder over time. Right. How do time crystals, with their persistent order, fit into that fundamental principle? That's a great question. It really gets to the heart of what makes time crystals so fascinating. They're not breaking the second law. They're pushing the limits of our understanding of it. Okay. They maintain order not by avoiding entropy, but by exhibiting a very specific type of order that persists. So like a really carefully choreographed dance. Exactly. The dancers move individually, but maintain a collective pattern. It seems like time crystals are forcing us to look at the second law in a whole new way. They're not defying it. Mm -hmm. They're revealing a deeper understanding of order and disorder. I think so. So creating these larger, more complex time crystals seems to be a major roadblock. Our sources talk about trapped ions. How might that help us overcome those limitations? Well, trapped ions are really promising for building these bigger time crystals because we can control individual ions really precisely using these electromagnetic fields. And that lets us make these well-defined structures and manipulate how those ions interact with each other. So instead of using those naturally occurring interactions, scientists can kind of engineer them. Exactly. And that's essential if we want to build more complex time crystal systems. Wow. This level of control must be a total game changer for building those time crystals with specific properties. What else are scientists looking into to address those scalability challenges? Another really exciting avenue is using superconducting circuits. Okay. These circuits are usually used for stuff like MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Yeah. But they can also be engineered to show quantum behavior. Oh, wow. And the advantage here is that we can actually build circuits that behave like these large quantum systems. Right. And that could really simplify the whole scaling up process. That's interesting how tech originally developed for medical imaging can be adapted for this cutting edge research. Our sources also mentioned photonics as a potential platform. Yeah. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. Photonics is all about light. And the idea here is to trap those particles of light photons in these repeating patterns of optical cavities. Okay. We're essentially making this time lattice. This could lead to time crystals that exhibit this periodic behavior in how light flows, opening up all these new possibilities for optical applications. It sounds like scientists are really trying out a ton of different platforms to create time crystals, each with its own pros and cons. For sure. But beyond scalability, there's the issue of maintaining quantum coherence. How does that impact these time crystal based technologies? So coherence, you know, it's preserving that 
delicate quantum state of the system. Right. And it's absolutely crucial for time crystals. Any disturbance, even noise from the environment, can mess that up. Okay. Leading to decoherence. Mm -hmm. And that basically destroys the time crystals' properties. So it's not just building them. It's about protecting them from any interference, too. Our sources suggest that decoherence is a big problem for those real-world applications, like quantum computing. It is, yeah. If we want to use time crystals for quantum computing, we need to maintain that coherence for much longer periods. And that's really hard to do. Think about it. A quantum computer is doing this complex calculation. And then suddenly, a random electromagnetic field comes along, disrupts everything, ruins the entire thing. Wow. So developing ways to protect time crystals from that external noise is crucial. It is. What are scientists doing to tackle that? Well, researchers are exploring a bunch of techniques to fight decoherence. One way is to come up with better isolation methods. We can shield them from those environmental disturbances. They're also looking into ways to make more robust time crystals. Okay. Ones that are naturally less affected by noise. So kind of a two-pronged approach, right? Right. Protecting them from the environment and making them more resilient on their own. But then on top of scalability and coherence, we have the issue of control precision. Yeah. Why is that so important for realizing the full potential of these time crystals? Well, control precision is our ability to really fine-tune those parameters of a time crystal with really high accuracy. So, for example, for discrete time crystals, we need to control things like the strength and the timing of that driving force. Right. Or for continuous time crystals, we need to be able to really precisely set the initial conditions. Okay. This level of control is really important if we want to study their behavior and tailor their properties for specific applications. It's like a conductor leading an orchestra. They have to control the timing and dynamics of every instrument to create this beautiful symphony. And our sources say that control precision is key if we want to achieve those more ambitious goals with time crystals, like that quantum computing. That's right. If we want to use time crystals for quantum computing, we need to be able to really precisely control how they interact with each other okay. and manipulate their states to do specific tasks. So it's like programming a quantum computer, but instead of manipulating bits, we're controlling these delicate quantum states of the time crystals. It's amazing how much precision and ingenuity is needed to harness the power of these systems. It's fascinating to think about how they might change how we understand time itself. It is. What are some of the philosophical implications of these systems that seem to defy our basic understanding of time? Well, time crystals challenge our traditional understanding of time. Right. They show that time can be cyclical, even at these fundamental levels of reality. So instead of like a straight arrow, time is more like a winding river. Yeah. Constantly looping back on itself. Yeah, that's a good analogy. And that idea has some huge implications for our understanding of cause and effect. Right. If time can repeat itself, does that mean cause and effect aren't as absolute as we thought? That's a really deep question, and it's one that'll keep philosophers and physicists debating for a long time. For sure. Time crystals make us rethink our assumptions about time, mm -hmm. how it flows, and how it relates to causality. It's a good reminder that even those basic concepts we take for granted can be challenged and changed as we learn more about the universe. Definitely. Now, let's look at some potential applications. The things that has scientists and technologists so excited. The possibilities are pretty amazing. They span all these different fields. Timekeeping, sensing even quantum computing. Let's start with timekeeping. Okay. Time crystals could totally change the way we measure time. Our sources say that time crystals, specifically DTCs, could lead to atomic clocks that are way more accurate and stable than anything we have now. What makes DTCs so good for timekeeping? Well, DTCs are these inherently stable systems. They have these super precise oscillations. Imagine a pendulum that swings perfectly. Nothing can disrupt it. DTCs, with that subharmonic response we talked about, they exhibit this kind of stability. It makes them perfect for these ultra-precise clocks. And that kind of precise timekeeping would have a huge impact. It would. Our sources talk about GPS navigation, communication networks, and even some fundamental scientific research. Can you tell us a little bit more about how these fields would benefit from time crystal-based 
clocks. Sure. So in GPS navigation, having those super accurate clocks is essential for determining location. With these time crystal based clocks, we could maybe even get down to centimeter level accuracy. Wow. Which would be amazing for navigation systems. That would be incredible. And in communication networks, you need that precise time synchronization for seamless data transmission, especially as our systems get faster and more complex, time crystal clocks could help us eliminate timing errors, and that would lead to much more reliable communication. Gotcha. So what about scientific research? Yeah, so in fields like astronomy and cosmology, having that ultra-precise timekeeping is essential for studying these distant objects and understanding how the universe has evolved. Right. Time crystal clocks could give us those more accurate measurements, leading yeah. to some new discoveries. It sounds like time crystals could really bring us into a whole new era of precision in a ton of different fields. I think so. Moving on from timekeeping, let's talk about sensing. Our sources say that time crystals' sensitivity to those environmental changes could be used to create some really sensitive detectors. Yeah, they're incredibly sensitive to their surroundings. Even the tiniest change in temperature or magnetic field or any environmental factor can change their oscillation patterns. And that makes them perfect for developing sensors that can pick up those really subtle changes with incredible precision. Our sources mention things like medical diagnostics, environmental monitoring, and even resource exploration. Mm -hmm. Could you give us some specific examples of how these time crystal sensors might be used? Yeah, so in medical diagnostics, these sensors could detect biomarkers for diseases, like really early on. That would mean we could start treatment sooner and have better outcomes for patients. Right. Imagine a sensor that could tell if you have cancer cells before they even form a tumor. Right. That would be game changing. And in environmental monitoring, we could use them to find even tiny amounts of pollutants right. in the air or water. That would give us real-time data to help protect the planet. We could put them in areas that are prone to pollution. They could uh, alert us to dangers so we can take action. Okay. What about resource exploration? How could they be used there? In resource exploration, time crystals could be used to develop these super sensitive graphometers. And those can detect changes in the Earth's gravitational field. Oh, yeah. And that would help us find things like underground mineral deposits or oil with much better accuracy. So it sounds like time crystals could really revolutionize how we keep track of our health, the environment, and even our planet's resources. They could. But maybe the most exciting application of all is in quantum computing, a field that could change everything from drug discovery to material science. How could time crystals play a role in this? Well, quantum computers are really powerful, but they're also really fragile. Right. Their quantum states are easily disrupted by noise, which causes errors. But time crystals, with their stability and resistance to interference, could help us build fault-tolerant quantum computers. So it's like having a quantum computer with built-in error correction. So that means the computations stay accurate even if there's noise? Mm -hmm. Our sources suggest that this could help us finally unlock the full potential of quantum computing. Yeah. Letting us solve those problems that are way too complex for regular computers. Think about it. Using quantum computers to simulate these complex molecules for drug discovery to design new materials or even to break the encryption codes that protect our data online. These are just a few examples of what we could do with fault-tolerant quantum computing, and time crystals could be the key. It's clear that time crystals have huge potential across many different fields. They can change how we do timekeeping, sensing, and quantum computing. It really feels like they could bring us into a whole new era of technology. But even beyond those practical applications, they also challenge how we think about time itself. What are some of those bigger implications? of these time-bending systems? Well, time crystals show us that time, even at the quantum level, can be cyclical. That really challenges how we traditionally think about time as this linear thing always flowing in one direction. Right. It brings up all these questions about cause and effect and the arrow of time, questions that will keep scientists and philosophers busy for a long time. It's incredible to think that even in physics, we still have so much to learn and so many mysteries to uncover. <laughs> Well, that brings our deep dive into the world of time crystals to an end. We've covered a lot, from the theoretical basics to potential applications and even the philosophical stuff. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And for more deep dives into science and tech, be sure to like and subscribe to 15-Minute Discourse.